everybody, it's Warp Jester, and welcome to another episode of Warp Jester Does SMP Modded Style. Uh, trying to get back into the swing of things here, so uh, this is actually going to be a, a quote-unquote normal episode. Uh, we're actually going to be uh, working on the forestry town, and uh, the reason for it is, quite frankly, is the power issue. Um, as you may or may not know, as of right now, we are still relying on Yankee. For all of our power. Uh, Yankees at this wonderful little house here. And uh, all these trees up here, those provide the saplings for uh, some uh, eco fuel as well as the uh, wood we use for charcoal. Uh, we actually take that stuff and we uh, pipe it slash uh, run it over to the workshop. And I've got a system in the workshop that uh, is breaking the wood down into charcoal, which I'll show you in a second here. And uh, then we process the biofuel, and uh, uh oh, get out of there. And uh, we run that over to the power plant, and that runs the uh, four boilers we have. That runs the twelve railcraft uh, turbines. So yeah, kind of a crazy setup. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I love Yankee to death, and we love having this place there. But uh, in the end, you know, having to go into his house and deal with stuff, it just kind of seems. I don't know, awkward. <laughs> so, anyway, so yes, we've got... He, he basically brings over a deep cycle... Or a deep cycle? <laughs> deep storage unit here. He's got full of uh, wood. And then uh, we run it through these... I guess you have four steam ovens. If you haven't seen these things before, they're really kind of cool. Uh, these are a real craft item. They're steam ovens, as you can see. They run steam to uh, basically cook anything you want. Uh, just basically an oversized, uh, complicated uh, traditional oven. Now... And preface this, yes, you could definitely do this with, like, uh, uh, any other furnace type system. I'm sure even a lot faster. But this was kind of fun to do. So I set up a boiler. It feeds these guys. These guys pump out charcoal, and then charcoal is piped via our AE system over to the boilers at the power plant. Um, again, there are better ways, but this is a fun way to do it. So, anyways, we've been wanting to get, you know, towns starting to get working and whatnot. We actually had a little incident, uh... Due to uh, removal of certain items and uh, a chunk error, which basically took out this entire corner of the shop here. I'm actually going to turn the uh, chunks on here so you can see it. This chunk right here I'm standing in, that's a kind of the corner of the uh, shop here, got reset. Our server has a nasty little habit once in a while that if it gets a really nasty chunk error, it will regen the chunk. So this corner of the uh, shop was gone. And in that corner was the old uh, charcoal system. And that pretty much nuked it. And we didn't really think about it. VST saw the issue, repaired everything she could remember to repair um, in the, in the uh, workshop. She did a great job repairing everything, getting all the... AE lines run and whatnot. But one thing she did not realize is the charcoal. So long story short, charcoal ran out, so we were dropped to basically half efficiency. Um, and then also, since we have no charcoal, we weren't able to feed the train running to Ruark's place. So basically Ruark kind of got gypped, if you will. Uh, okay, I got some turbines to fix here. Um, yeah, so long story short, we really do want to have... Uh, a more permanent public system, if you will, for power generation, or rather uh, fuel, <laughs> so we can uh, fuel it up and, and not have to worry about uh, being somebody's house, so if they want to move, be AFK forever, like Yankee's been busy with real life and whatnot, um, this will make things a little better. So I figured it's about time we got around to doing the uh, the Forestry Town thing. Um, I've been doing a lot of pondering on what we want to do, how we want to do it. Now, Again, originally, uh, Yankee actually took up the mantle of running the forest of town. Uh, but then he decided he kind of was a lot more interested in... in uh, hello, that's not a mind. Was a bit more interested in um, bees. And so he wanted to go do bees. So like, okay, well, go do bees, that's fine. But since we do kind of need to have something running for forest of town, since we need the wood and charcoal and all that happy stuff, I figured I'd just go ahead and take care of it myself. And... Uh, uh, I finally <laughs> had the time to actually get to. What am I picking up here? Uh, I finally got a chance to get around to uh, 
doing the, the forestry thing. And, of course, as soon as I finally get around to getting a chance to do it, Yankee shows back up. And he's like, yeah, you know what? I really want to do forestry town. I'm like, I was already starting on it, but, hey, you're welcome to take back over or join me or whatever you want to do. Um, so me and Yankee are going to do kind of a collaborative work. Uh, there have been already a lot of iterations to what we we're going to do and how we were going to do it. Now, uh, God, I burned through. <laughs> These quantum legs make you run, run fast, but they just make you eat food like crazy. Um, originally, Yankee had actually had plans to basically do a bay fill um, and set up this kind of a test here, but basically set up these uh, MFR um, growers. And kind of have like you know a little set for it. Um, I'm not personally real keen on that. I actually kind of wanted to leave the coast natural, have a big bay, and put some ships out here, or whatever. And since he was gone, I figured I'd go ahead and uh, start this. And I showed you guys last time. I, I grew this big old tree here with the anticipation of. Uh, I think I said this. Uh, I actually want to put the the town in the uh, the tree here. Hey, there's Tox. Um, so I can put the, the town in the tree. Uh, and then have all the process went out there. Basically, just kind of concealed to that. Give it, again, something different to do. So it's not the same type of <laughs> layout in every town. Uh, so that's kind of the plan here. Now, there are a few different elements we're going to uh, uh, dive into um, with Forestry Town. And uh, uh, basically, I'm going to break it down into cosmetic. I want to get the tree cleaned up a little bit. I'm trying to think about how best to do things. I really don't like the fact that it's just kind of a straight... <laughs> Right to the ground. I understand it's a giant redwood, and redwoods are kind of straight, and that's fine. Um, but I may may change things up a little down here. I'm not entirely sure yet. And we'll kind of see how things go. Um, but basically, we're going to have, as you see, the rails come in. Right now, I'm just kind of testing things out. But I've got the rail going around in a loop coming back out. The idea would be this would be the passenger line, if you will. So it's going to come in and kind of like a little stop right here so people can get off and, you know, board and disembark and then the train can take off again. Now, we are going to be running uh, these rails for dual purpose, part freight, part passenger. So I'm going to have to have some type of uh, spur that comes off for the freight trains. And the freight trains are going to be um, uh, picking up and dropping off items for this town or from this town for other towns. Now, my original plan, since I want to have everything, all the processing and, and whatnot up there, was to actually run the uh, freight system actually up and around the tree way up to the top and uh, go that route. But I'm not so sure I want to do that because it's going to really kind of monkey with the look of it. I may do it. I'd like to. But that's going to be a lot of work because just, I mean, if you look at the way this reel goes around the tree right here, it's already kind of cockamamie just <laughs> trying to wrap it around. Um, so it'd be kind of weird. So I'm not entirely sure I want to do that just yet. Um, uh, Theme-wise, I've... I think I mentioned this before, but I kind of like doing kind of a themes. You get a palette of colors or materials you want to use, and you kind of stick with that. So if people build homes, you kind of want to, you know, stay within that kind of a theme so they look like they fit. You want to have a a, a, a neo-modern, you know, Picasso-looking house next to a, a, a bunch of Tudor-style homes, something like that. Um, I was thinking about doing Tudor-style. If you don't know what that is, just look up Tudor in Google and look up images or Tudor homes. Um, but basically, it's a kind of a whitewash wall with uh, exposed beams sticking out of it, uh, support beams. And it's a very classic style. I like it. But after thinking about that for a little bit, I realized um, I think I might, actually might want to do uh, steampunk. I think that would be kind of fun. So I have, you know, big giant... Uh, Pipe sticking out of it with smoke and steam coming out of it and, and whatnot. Kind of a very kind of thing. So that, that's kind of the idea for the theme of it. So that's what I'm going to kind of run with. Um, so we're going to do, again, the, the, the cosmic aspect, and then there's going to be the functional aspect of the town itself. This is where we're going to have all the processes uh, for different uh, processes. Uh, all the processes for the different processes. <laughs> uh, all the different processes for different wood products. So you're going to have you know, wood planks of all different woods. You're going to have stairs. You're going to have sticks. You're going to have furniture, etc. Basically, the idea is, since this is a forestry town, I want to m make it responsible for providing all of the wood-related uh, items. And there's a lot. There's a whole lot. And we may further subdivide this later. But for now, 
that's what I'm kind of running away. So, uh, we'll have in, basically little buildings resting in amongst the foliage here. Uh, maybe even sticking out of the, the trunk down there a little bit. Depends on how much room we have in the foliage. Uh, and just have, you know, one building that's isolated that's the, the stick <laughs> the stick building and, uh, you know, the, the, the chair building and so on. So that's that's kind of the idea. And I think, I think kind of for fun, too, when it comes to... Uh, uh, how to make things look. So this is going to be kind of passenger pick up and drop off area. We'll have an elevator of some kind going up, uh, maybe in the center, who knows. And uh, around the sides here, I want to have uh, like the railcraft uh, elevator rails with mine carts going up and down. So think of it in, in terms of all of the supplies are going to be picked up and dropped off by the supply trains down here, and then we'll move all the items up into the actual head of the tree for processing and, and storage and whatnot. Uh, so that's, that's that side of it. Now the other side of it is going to be the actual tree harvesting. Now I've gone through a lot of iterations on this and realized some of the follies of it. Originally I really wanted to do Steve's carts. So what I did was I started with uh, laying out some rails here and I, I wanted to be kind of snooper stinky and have a little rail system that Steve's carts can come in and out as you can see they come up through here and up through there. And I'll show you the side that I'm in here. And then I come in here and drop off their items and go down and get stored and all that. Um, I even went so far as to to, keep, to preserve the, the cosmetic look of things. The Steve's carts actually are, were going to be running right in there. Hidden. Hidden really well. Which I kind of like. Um, <laughs> so that was the idea of it. And they came out the other side here and then came out right down there. There you go. So... That was the original plan, and I wanted to have, instead of having, you know, most people when they do tree farms, they have these nice, neat rows of trees, and it's a, you know, uh, just a straight orchard of trees, if you will, that get hacked down, picked up, and it's efficient, and it's lovely. But it, it's not natural, and it kind of looks derpy. So, I was actually kind of moseying around this little area right here, and I realized, you know, this looks all natural, and these trees are really, really close-knit. So I'm thinking, well, Heck, why not do that? Leave it kind of natural. Maybe have like a Steve's cart winding through the trees and hacking up, you know, a few here and there and replanting them. And I thought, yeah, that would be cool. You could actually have a you know, very natural looking forest. So I was going to take this railroad forest and just have all the different types of trees all kind of intermingled in there. And we could have the Steve's carts go out and hack down different trees. Um, the folly is there. One is you'd have to have dedicated rail lines for each type of tree. Otherwise, you're going out hacking everything when you only need one thing. Not incredibly useful. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. Um, so, <laughs> the, the change of plan here was I was actually thinking about doing... Uh, some type of uh, harvester, either the MFR harvesters or the uh, forestry harvesters for the trees, and put little clumps of trees. Again, it would still kind of look like this in terms of you'd have these little trees around later, but this one little clump of trees would be a forestry, you know, growing the trees and, and harvesting them. So keep it very natural. You can see you have a bunch of small trees in amongst these trees. Uh, and then what I was going to do is have a railcraft locomotive and, and you know, hauling carts come out, and it would actually go out to the different areas for all the different types of trees. It would drop off supplies for, you know, power for the uh, harvesters and fertilizer and whatever else they needed and pick up the stuff that they're harvesting and then bring it back. And the reason why I want to do that instead is because of chunk loading. The issue with having a very dispersed um, forest of trees to cut down is you have to have them loaded. And if you don't have them chunk loaded, they ain't going to grow. Well, trying to disperse throughout this entire forest, uh, you're talking about a lot of chunks. And that's not going to be ideal. So, the idea is going to be um, to have it dispersed like that. But instead of trying to chunk load every single chunk out here, which is just going to weigh really heavy on the server and cause problems potentially, I figure what I'd try to do to mitigate some of that damage, so to speak, is I'd go ahead and have a couple different railcraft uh, trains that I talked about with anchor carts attached to them. And the idea would be that way, as they meander out, they'll load a, a, a nine chunk area, three by three area as they're meandering around. And they'll give the, the, the processing a little time to let the trees grow and fill up and get things to transfer and all of that. This will hopefully solve the issue of having too much load. Now the server's been wonderful. Turgo has been 
like super freaking stellar, keeping our server just smooth as silk. So <laughs> I appreciate that. And this will also be another fun opportunity to play with some more of the Railcraft stuff, which I always enjoy. So, so that's the plan, and that's what we're gonna run with. Um, now I'm sorry. This is a, I'm sorry. This is another talky episode. This is pretty typical here. I am gonna dive right into work. I'm probably gonna start work on uh, the actual harvesting part of it here. So get the rail line run in and I, uh, basically have a set up so it unloads, get the trains to come out. And my idea kind of here is I'm going to have a little hub here, if you will, that will go out to the different sections. Now, my breakdown for the sections um, is basically kind of by mod, more or less, if you will. And I say more or less because it's, it's kind of a little bit loose here. Um, we have three different biome mods. We've got Highlands, we've got Biomes XL, and we've got Biomes of Plenty, all of which have between 13 and 20-ish different types of trees. Now, not all these trees will be uh, being done here in Forestry Town. Uh, some will be orchard trees, like apple trees and, and, and whatnot. There'll be uh, maybe, a, maybe an actual orchard town as opposed to a forestry town. So I'll have those there. Um... Of course, there's some large format trees like these big redwoods. I'm not going to try <laughs> a portion to come down with. So, those will be kind of limited. But then you also got the vanilla woods. And they've got a couple of random ones, like the rubber trees from both MFR as well as uh, industrial craft. And then you also have Natura. And Natura's got, I think, like 13 different trees. Some really pretty ones, and a lot of them grow in the nether. So, I'm not really sure if they can grow in the overworld or what. I'll have to figure that one out. But, nonetheless, I figure what I'd do is I'd have the trains come out here, the little hub, if you will, and then I have different trains dedicated for different areas. So, you'd have a, you know, biomes of plenty, a biome, uh, extra biomes, highlands, vanilla, and so on. So, the trains would come out and they'd be color coded or some kind of delineation so they know where to go to. And they take their own rails and run out to the different sections of the forest where that stuff is being harvested and again they'd run out basically chunk load the area and they can sit out there and basically uh get held in place whoa hello um okay here thunder without rain that's bad news <laughs> that's always bad news anyways uh so they, they go out to different areas i figure if anything more if you know the cars go out and they get parked and wait to be loaded up, if you will, then we can load that area. They can do their processing, grow the trees, harvest the trees, fill the train up, and then the train can come back. <laughs> I'm guessing that was. <laughs> so, there's there's the idea, there's a plan I'm sorry it took 20 minutes of time to explain it all. I, I, I promise you the next couple episodes coming up here are going to be uh, me actually working on these projects. Actually, Tox is going to be joining me for this. Um, I'm also going to be uh, interleaving those, if you will, along with uh, kind of a, that, a, a mini run that I uh, already noted, which is uh, working with Tox to start training, teaching him uh, how to do a lot of the automation and a lot of the cool stuff that modded minecraft has to offer he's very new to it it's gonna be fun to to be able to teach him i hope he will teach you guys as well um so i got a lot of a lot of stuff i want to do here i hope to get it all done <laughs> so that's that is the plan um again this is kind of a, a priority for me i've had to put down like the visitor center and uh a few other things because we really need to have a reliable source of of wood and and fuel and whatnot so this is going to be a good way to do it so we're going to start with this and get this rolling. I'm going to do the harvesting first, and we'll work on the pretties and the processing later. And uh, hopefully that will work out well. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm, going to, I'm going to cut it off here. I try to keep my videos around 20 minutes so I don't bore you too much. Um, however, uh, as always, I certainly do appreciate you taking time to sit down with me and watch the videos. I hope that I've... Uh, uh, wet your whistle a little bit and and, and, and curi made you curious and want to come back for more. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, curiosities, uh, quandaries, please feel free to uh, uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, likewise, uh, please do leave me a like if you enjoyed the episode. The likes really do help me out, and that's always appreciated. And of course, as always, if you do enjoy these episodes and do enjoy uh, seeing me go through and fumble through a lot of this, because I do a lot of fumbling, uh, 
uh, by all means, please subscribe to the channel, and I would love to, to see you every week and uh, show you what I'm doing here. Uh, uh, additionally, we do have a couple of uh, uh, YouTubers that are on the uh, on our server now. Uh, we've got Ruark and Tox. I'm hoping to get Snow Wolf to join us soon. He has uh, signed on, so to speak. He just needs to have some time to actually do some recording. He's gone dormant for a little while. <laughs> so as soon as he becomes available, I'll give him the, the server tour and get him settled in. We'll do something with him as well. And I'm always on the hunt for uh, new and interesting people I like to bring on. Uh, if you are interested in our server, you're certainly welcome to find out more about us and our server at BottleRocketGaming.com. You're also certainly welcome to sign up on the uh, website so you can chat with us. That is actually a great way to communicate with us. We check the uh, website quite often. We've got uh, you know groups you can join and kind of a, a wall, if you will, you can post on. Just kind of like a pseudo uh, uh, social network, if you will. And uh, additionally, if you are interested in playing on our modded Minecraft server, uh, we are always looking for new interesting people. If you happen to be a YouTuber, kudos, that's great, that's awesome. It's, it, it's, it's a really convenient way to get to know who you are, which I always appreciate. However, it is not a prerequisite. If you just like to have fun and good-natured person, please feel free to go ahead and leave a post in the forums and apply for the server. We will take a look at it and get a chance to talk with you and just get a chance to get to know you and make sure that you're a good fit for us and that we're a good fit for you. And if it works out, then you can join us and have some fun. So, as always, guys, I appreciate it. Have yourself a good one, and I will catch you next time. Bye!